Okay, in the previous video on this channel, we talked a lot about iteration command and the iteration list command. In the next few videos, I just want to make some things with those commands. So I'm not going to go into as much detail as I did. Go and watch that video if you want to know the blow by blow account of how that command works. But today, uh, I want to make a Sipinski carpet. Last time I made a Sipinski triangle. The Sipinski carpet is like the square version of that. Um, and if you have heard of a Menga sponge, which I had something to do with 10 years ago, wow. Uh, more on that in another video. It's like the one or two dimensional version. Huh. It's not quite two dimensional though, is it? Never mind. <laughs> Fractal dimensions. Strange. It's the flat version of the Menga sponge. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to go straight in. I'm going to define a square with three po uh, four points. That's the normal way to describe a square. Let's get the GeoGebra window up. And I'm going to put them... Where am I going to put them? I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Well, it looks like I've done six squares. That's more by luck than judgment. I'd like them to be three points so I can move them around later on and see if the same fractal sort of works when I move the corners. But let's just make the square with those three. Uh, polygon command. Uh, in fact, I was going to use a list of points because that keeps it cleaner. So I don't want, don't want these bits, but that should make polygon. And the idea is I'm going to just, just try and refer to the square, which is called Q1 at the moment, and build a command which I can iterate, which inputs a square, or rather a list of squares, as you'll see. Uh, and then spits out a new list of squares which is bigger. And there are several ways to do it. We could take the square and draw the middle square, which is kind of the bit you want to remove if you if you think about this in a traditional way. And then you'd be sort of left with eight squares around it. And you want to you could you could draw the bits you're going to remove, or you could just draw the squares. I'm going to start by just drawing the squares. The other way of doing it is using a chaos game approach, which actually is cleaner, and we might need to rely on for some more complicated fractals later. So I'm going to do both of those. Um, I'm not going to bother drawing the removed squares, I'm just going to draw the outer squares. It's equivalent though whether you draw the bits you kind of want to remove or the bits that are left. So let's do a sort of practice run. And remember I don't really want to have to refer to A, B, C and D. I just want to take the square. And it's easy enough to get the corners of the square with the vertex command. Uh, Q1 one would give me that one. So if I run through a sequence of them with K instead of that, and then let K run from one to four. I should get all, all four corners, there they are. So that's a list of the corners. But for a Sipinski carpet, we actually need eight copies of the original square. Uh, one which is the whole square sort of shrunk at that center of enlargement. One is shrunk to that one, that one, that one. But then there are ones in the middle as well. So actually what I'd like is also to have the midpoints of this, the edges of this square. And I want to do that just by referring to the square. So that's easy enough, you could do midpoint uh, of the the two vertices, or any two vertices that are next to each other. So if you did one and the midpoint Q1, 2, uh, why is that not working? I don't want midpoint, I want vertex. So that has got that side thing, and I might as well let that sequence sort of run through and get a few of them. Oh, that's annoying. Ah! Because it's yeah, because I didn't press return, it's gone. Do it again. Midpoint vertex Q1. But I'm going to go K this time. Might as well just copy this command. Now we have we'll have a slight wriggle here because if I do K plus one, and then let this be a sequence where K goes from one to four, it's going to be fine until it hits K plus one when K is four, and that, then there isn't a fifth vertex. So you see, there are three of the midpoints. There are ways around this. We could just manually add in the last point. I'd like to do it cleanly. So I'm going to use a sort of mod command. So let's just do... I'm going to run from 0 to 3. That's annoying because there isn't a 0 off vertex, so let's just do k plus 1. But this time, instead of k plus 1, I'm going to do mod of k plus 1 mod 4. Uh, But it needs to be kept referring to k, the original k plus one plus one. So I need another plus one, and that's done it. So the mod is just doing the modular arithmetic. The plus one, is, the first plus one is needed because I want it to go from one to four. But actually, the modular arithmetic then goes from zero to three, and this second plus one is to keep this being one more than the other one. That's a list of the midpoints, and that's fine. Uh, what I really want though is to be able to get a list given a square, a list of those eight points. 
So I'm going to make a command which joins all of them. So I'll copy that and let's do cancel all that. Join some lists. So that's the first list. That's the list of the corners. And let's grab this command, which is a messy thing now. I'll copy that, put that in this second argument. And that, I hope, is a list of all eight points. So these two are kind of my practice runs. In fact, I'm going to delete them to avoid confusion. Uh, and these are just corners. I haven't done any iteration yet. What I want to use these are the, the centers of enlargement for the original squares. So let's create the first iteration by zipping through that list. An enlargement of the object Q1, which is the original square. I might have to change that in a moment, but, but it's going to be a third of the size. You'll see why in a sec. Uh, I need to get three of them along one side. And then the center of enlargement is some point, and I would like it to run through those points I've just made as a list. So P from the list L3. But in practice, what I need is to not refer to L3, which exists for that original square. I need, I need that command. So it looks like it's doing it, by the way. But let's um, let's actually get that entire command in. So the command I did a practice run for is, gives me something to copy. It's going to not refer to L3. Let's refer to that horrendously long command. And that still works. And even if I delete L3, this command is where Sorry, it's not to delete. Let's try deleting it. It does still work. So that's done the first iteration. As ever, I'm going to practice getting the next iteration by checking I've got a command that takes a list, because the output there from a square being given in is spat out a list, which is what I need. But I need the command to be able to pick up that list. So let's zip the previous command. Again, I'm going to copy all of that. It's getting horrendous. I never want to read that full command again. But zip that command. Right, it's all there. But this time, we're going to run over Q doesn't know what Q is, but I'm going to tell it then to run Q from the list L1, which is the previous list. And it has done it. Let's hide the first iteration. That is kind of what this Ipinski carpet looks like. I'll sort out the colors in a bit. The final problem, though, is that this thing, I didn't need to double click it, is not a flat list. It's a list of lists. So let's just put a flatten on the front of that. And that, I think, is the command that's my sort of solid practice run for the iteration. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to hide it. Let's keep the original square there. And we're going to do the iteration command. This time I want just iteration, not iteration list, because all of the squares are there in the final version, I think. Let's try it. Iteration. Paste the expression. Now, all sorts of variables in here. It knows about Q because it's zipping over that. Let's just check. It's got a flatten zip zip. The first zip was to do the eight points. The second zip was to accept a list. Flatten flattens the list. The thing it doesn't know about, though, is Q. It's first of all looking at Q to come from L1. I don't want it to come from L1. I want it to come from the previous version of the iteration. So I'm going to call it Q's plural. And then I'll tell it to iterate over Q's and start with Q's being a list of lists. And the first starting point is Q1, my original square. I haven't made a slider. That's annoying. I'm just going to type in N. Uh, I really should have made a slider first, but let's just do it. Create a slider for N. It's going to create some other sliders, I think. Yeah. I think they're all irrelevant. I don't know why I'm demonstrating these bugs. I'm just going to delete them. N is still fine, though. I'd like N to be an integer. <laughs> I'm still nervous about whether it's going to work. I've just deliberately kept us on tenterhooks. I'm not going to let it up go, go up very high. Up go. You heard me. Does it work? Yes. Yes. What a mess. OK, uh, coloring is an issue. Let's hide the original square. Let's make these squares black. Let's hide the uh, axes. Let's put that up the top. Let's make use of the space. Make the lines thin. And like I said, make it black and opaque. There is the first iteration. Just about see the edges of squares. That's not. I don't, I'm not unhappy with that. That's just sort of. A processing thing in Jojo. Let's crank it up. Nice. 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 Okay. Five it's coping with. I don't think I'd be able to see six if I went that high. Don't do this live on camera. It's really thinking hard. This is growing much quicker than the Sierpinski triangle because it's a power of eight growth. Right, it's done six. I can hardly tell the difference. So let's just calm everything down and go back to five. Uh, and there we have it. We have made the Sierpinski carpet 
by drawing the squares at each stage. Uh, we've done it quite quickly, but there's a lot of getting used to that iteration command, and I really think those practice build-up commands are a helpful way to proceed to avoid a lot of pain. Let's try an alternative version now. Okay, for the alternative version, I'm just going to turn the grid back on so I can see where I'm going to put some points. Let's make four points again. Uh, that would be a square there, wouldn't it? Okay, and we can... Oh, we're not even going to define the square this time. Those are just the four points. I'm actually just going to make the points between them. Now, I could construct these as midpoints, but if I don't, I can drag them around later on, and actually that might give you some flexibility. I've got the eight points now. They're in the same places that eight point list I made in the other one but the way we're going to do this one those eight points can always be those eight points so I don't need to grab them from a square which I'm iterating so I hope this is going to be much simpler I'm going to make one more point which is the starting point for the chaos game um, it doesn't really matter where this is I'll move that around later on and let's run through this iteration what I'm going to do is like in the chaos game idea I'm going to take that point and in the chaos random version of the game you go to one of those points at random one and eight chance of each of them and you'd go a proportion of the way there. Um, the original version with three points, you go halfway there. This one, because of the way it's scaling, I'm going to go uh, two-thirds of the way there. Uh, I think that's right. Anyway, let's... Uh, are we, or are we going to go one-third of the way there? We're going to enlarge it by a factor of a third, which is sort of going two-thirds of the distance towards E. And that crucial difference, the one minus or a third, or is it two-thirds, or one-third, whatever. It depends on how you're going to do that command. If we're going to use an enlargement thing, I think we'll use a scale factor of a third. Um, I wonder if we can do this in one go. This is probably asking for trouble. I'm not going to do it. Let's do one. So enlarge the object M by a third uh, towards, let's go point E. Right? So that is that is doing what I'm doing. It's only done one point. Let's do all of the list. Uh, you know what? Let's make a list of these points. Here's a useful way to get a list of things drag, no, no, don't drag those things, drag them from the algebra view into the input bar and you've got a list. And since that list is always going to be the same, um, I'm going to call these center points for the centers of enlargement, CPS. There we go. That's the list of the eight points I want to enlarge M towards or from. Shrink. Words have failed me at this point. Fractals do this to your head. I don't care. That's the list of center points. Let's do a zip command so we can run through that list of enlarging object M by a third about point P. P doesn't exist, which I'm still glad about, but P should come from the list I've just made, capital P, CPS. And there are the eight enlargements, and it depends where M is. What I want to do is iterate that command on all of those points. Right, how do we do that? Uh, that was my practice run. Let's do the. I think it's good to do the next practice run. So we're going to zip. I'm going to grab that command that worked, copy it. I'm going to zip through that command to another zip layer. But this time it's going to, instead of using M, it's going to use some point Q. And it's going to grab Q from the list it gets. And I'll try that on the list I've just created, which is called L3. And you can see it's doing the next level. Each of those points is getting enlarged towards the, the eight corners again. So that's a good practice. I'm just going to type in the flatten as well because I know I need to flatten that list and that shouldn't change what it looks like just down here. It's a list. So that's the command I want. Copy that. I feel like this is easy. I'm going to hide my practice runs. I'm going to go straight in for the iteration. This time again, I only want the last iteration. Paste. Uh, the CPS is always going to be the same. This time it's the L3. I need to be careful. Let's call it Qs for a list of Qs. These are the points it's grabbing a list of points so queues needs to start with a list of a list m and we use the same n shall we no that's not i'm gonna make it a bunch of other sliders i don't need am i yeah didn't need any of them except the m delete them this time again it's not an integer let's make it an integer zero to seven and this time, let's have a look. It's doing it. I really, I, I'm slightly gobsmacked every time this creates a fractal. Uh, the points are way too big, so the resolution of this one is the size of the points, uh, which is both a strength and a weakness. Let's make them really small. 
and see how far we can crank this up. So at low iterations, it doesn't look very good, but by the time you've got four or five, it's starting to look pretty good. Uh, and that is looking at five. I wonder how it compares to this one at five. Looks pretty similar. I think if we go past five on this one, we're going to run into sort of even the tiny points I've made are too big. I think we'll see less detail. Yeah, they're starting to overlap too much. There's too many points in there. I, I kind of prefer this version because there are hundreds of thousands of points, not squares. And that's just less complicated for GeoGebra to handle. I'm trying to do both of them in one file, which is probably stupid. Uh, also, we've got a bit more flexibility. This M... Ooh, Let's leave it high enough to see what's going on. I could drag M around, and you can see all these points will move very slightly. You can hardly see them moving. If I go down the iterations, you can see it matters more. But by the time you've gone up to three or four iterations, it really doesn't matter where M was. If you want to be a purist about it, you could start it on one of the points we started on. That actually would shift everything up and towards that point. You could put it right in the middle. Um, it doesn't really matter. I think maybe that's the most symmetrical place to have it. I don't really care. We, we should be able to move these outer points, though. I haven't tried this. And we'll just get other fractals. Look at that. These are all fractal things. It happens to be a nice Menga carpet, Sipinski carpet, that's what they call it, uh, because of where I put those original points and they're sort of locked onto those lattice points. Uh, and that is producing it. There we go. That was a quick video to do the Sipinski carpet in two ways. Uh, and this principle will get you all sorts of fractals, uh, particularly these classic ones where you take a shape and remove a bit, or basically you're copying itself, which is in the end what most fractals do. There are exceptions. Don't quote me on that. See you next time.